Hey, so Christos, like I said, we're, we're stoked to have you on and, and uh, excited to learn more about what you're doing. So basically, for those who haven't uh, seen one of these yet, the last week we did one with Raf Nagal. And essentially the idea was to kind of let Raf come on and, and, and share some of these images that he had and, and just kind of talk about them. And that's what we're excited to do with you today, today as well. Just have you talk about some of these images, maybe talk about how you created them, maybe what modifiers you use and how you use them. Um, and that way we can all learn from you. Sound good? Sounds good. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, before we get started, just real quick, for those people that want to learn more about you, where can they find you? Website, Instagram, Facebook, can you give us some of that information? Sure. Um, my website is crystalstokesphotography.com, and it all links to my Instagram and my Facebook, so yeah. It's all sure. right in there. Awesome. And where <laughs> where are you based out of? Um, outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, so yeah. I'm in the South. Awesome. Very cool. Southern girl. like it. All right. Well, cool. So let's do this. Let's just jump right into it, Crystal. Why don't you, um, we talked a little bit about, you showed some really cool images. There's one, one thing that I love that you do a lot is, is, uh, you'll, you'll use a flash behind people, you know, like using the sphere and things like that. So you had one image that you showed me and I would love, let's start with that one. If that's okay. This one. Yeah, that's the one. I love that shot. So tell us a little bit about that, how you created it, what was kind of going through your mind, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So there's a little bit more to this story than just me wanting to create this shot. This particular bride, I found out the day before her wedding, she really wanted some bright and airy sunset shots. Well, she didn't tell me, the planner told me, because I do shoot a little bit darker normally. Um, and then on her wedding day, it turns out it was super cloudy. Uh, it had rained for a portion of it, but after the ceremony, uh, the rain stopped. And so we went outside and I said, I'm still going to give her her sunset shot that she wanted the backlight and everything. So for this particular shot, I took a uh, mag sphere and I placed it probably about 15 feet behind it. Actually, I had an assistant that was helping me. He said, is my husband, but um, he was holding the, yeah, he was holding the light for me. I mean, it's assistants are everything, but uh, he, was, he was holding the light behind them at a bit of an angle. And I let um, some of it come into frame, which created this nice, little um uh yeah you can't see my pointer this um flare around them which made it feel a little bit more authentic to the sun but i was very happy to be able to do that for her so with yeah, that no. plus plus a couple orange gels too cto nice gels. nice so do you find yourself using the cto gels a lot when you want to create that sunset any, I, mean, any, I shouldn't say sunset look but like a sun flare look yeah Yes, because it, it the you know obviously the the lower the sun is in the sky the warmer everything mm -hmm. becomes and in order to recreate that I feel like you do need to have that warmth in the image with the light. You, you, you know what I love about this one, Crystal, is that when I've done that in the past, I've never done it where that light is directly behind them, so that you're literally getting the flare. Like I've never actually created it with the flare um right there in the corner and actually what's interesting is um before i wasn't able to see your cursor and i i don't i think other people can see it now but in lightroom when you move your cursor yeah we can actually see that now um mm -hmm. but it, but i love how you have that just right in there do you find that um are you doing that a lot or was that something that you did this time and kind of like wow that's no yeah it was kind of an accident this time actually yeah <laughs> but it was a happy accident and i mean it makes sense it's it's the same sort of as the sun you have the it's like just a little bit of, of the hot part of the light coming into the shot, but you don't have that light actually in the picture. So um, just like the sun, it creates that, that, that flare, which is pretty cool. That's really cool. I love it. Awesome. Yeah, and, awesome. And, no. oh, I was just going to show you real quick um, just to get an idea of where everything was. I actually think I had the light a little bit more to the right in the image for the, for the, for this shot, but just to get an idea of where the light is and, and a pull back. Yeah, uh, no, that's, yeah, there it is. That's perfect. We, we love being able to see those behind the scenes because it really gives us a better idea of how exactly, you know, the photographer put it together. And, and so love it. It's beautiful. Oh. Super cool. Now there was another one that you had showed. It was, it was also kind of a sun look. I, I think, yeah, the, yeah. The portrait one yeah this is really really warm I get the, actually the sun was still out when I got this shot uh, the problem was it was behind trees so again I just wanted this was one of the first times I did this and it ended up turning out really cool I mean it's 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 different from sunset but at the same time 
it still gives that same warmth of sunset mm-hmm. and in the feel. And I, I, don't, I don't know, there's just something about that warm light when there's a warm moment that uh, makes everything, I don't know, just a little bit more emotive and cool. So, um, but for this shot, just to have a behind the scenes here, um, the backdrop was awesome. As you can see, we're actually in the parking lot here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, th- this was my 70 to 200. And typically when I'm shooting these sunset shots, I'm always using the longest lens possible because if you look right here, you can see the sun was actually, mm-hmm. this is where it was setting. Uh, but, but I couldn't get to that light uh, the way that I wanted to. And it, I use my 7200 because it obviously this isn't going to be able to compete with this. So <laughs> I go to yeah. 200 because it, it compresses it. It pulls it in. It makes it larger than it is. And it feels more authentic it, yeah. in comparison yeah. with the sunset. So, yeah. And this no, for oh, sure. Don't do anything with that light. <laughs> But, yeah. When you do those situations, you find that the couples are kind of like, "Huh, this is interesting." Uh, we're shooting in the parking lot, and then you. Oh, <laughs> and then absolutely, lot, yeah. A lot, a lot of times, I love showing them the the shot on the back of the camera. And back they're just of the like, camera. Ooh. Yeah, yep. they're like, "You're a wizard!" Like, like this is crazy. Whoa! Yeah, it's like <laughs> magic. It's it's it, all of a sudden, and the the thing that happens is once you show them what you've done, and I try to do this early on in the wedding day or the engagement session, is they immediately gain your trust and. As we all know, trust is everything on a wedding day. And to be able to create magic, for lack of a better term, where it doesn't already seem to exist, uh, at that moment, they're just they're just in your hands, you know? They're, yeah, they're like, yeah. whatever, just do it. And and that's nice to have that on yeah, a wedding yeah. day. It's actually, for me, it's everything to, to be able to gain their trust. For sure. For sure. Now, one, one question – that's awesome. That's awesome. One question that came up is in that shot right there, we can see a, a softbox on a stand as well. Was that softbox used in this shot? No, no, no. It was just there ready in case I needed it for something else. But uh, but uh, now it wasn't used in this shot. Perfect. And then is there a reason why you had it so far back? Like, do you tend to, do you find that you put it further back like that? Or do you usually have it closer or, or any uh, preference? I, pulled, or just gonna... I did pull it. I think this was actually before this. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was a little bit closer and actually I had somebody holding it a little bit higher, I think. Gotcha. gotcha. This was, yeah. This was in the summer. Um, yeah. So no, that, no that, and that's, it's funny. Cause a lot of times people ask me questions about a photo and they'll say like, Oh, what were your settings on the flash or things like that? And I really don't remember. I know um, I don't. I'm sorry. And so, no, no, you're totally fine. It's more interesting. I just, I'm looking at it. I'm just thought I would ask some questions right about that photo in, in particular. So, um, Love it. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing that as well. Sure. Absolutely. Let's, um, there were some other images in there. Let's, I'm going to, let's, I'm going to have you pick one that you would like to tell us a little bit more about. Sure. So, so many good ones. Um, let's see. I, this one, there isn't anything one. exceptional happening here. This is just, you know, a getting ready shot and the thing about it was this, this is what the scene sort of looked like before I pulled in the light. It, 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 it this isn't bad, bad, but it's just, I don't know, maybe a little bit boring. So what I really wanted to do was this, this was in Paris and, and this was the hotel room there. And I really wanted to focus the light on her, but uh, match it with the light coming through the window. Um, mm-hmm. So that, let me see, let's see here again. Um, so here you can see, you can barely see, but it, the, across the street, it just, I don't know, it feels a little bit more, it it gets rid of this mess on the bed. You can see a little bit of it. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, just really focused in on her. The makeup artist sort of disappeared into the background. She's on her phone. She's a very, very successful real estate agent and work is a lot of her life and, and for them and their story, just to tell to, to, to give that part of their story to them, it, it, it highlights that. So um, that's what is happening here. And, and in order to get this, because there really isn't anywhere to put a light stand, I had an actual uh, clamp that I put on the light right here on the left side of the wall. You can see it mm-hmm. right here. And just to, to highlight her. So yeah, 
and to match the ambient light in the room and then a little bit of the outside light. That, no, that's awesome. What, on that flash there, it looks like you have a grid. Is that right? Yes, this is gridded. So what was going through your mind when you put that up there and you thought, okay, I, I want to put a little light on her. You know, I, I mean, what was the reason that you added a grid to the flash? To, to focus it on her. I mean, in this shot, everything is, is sort of lit up. And I don't know if I, I actually looks like I turned these on now that I'm looking back at this, but um, I, I just really wanted her, the focus to be on her. And so yeah, in order yeah. to do that, uh, put the grid on it and the grid obviously focused the light a little bit more. Uh, it didn't spread to places that I didn't want it to be. And uh, yeah, we got this shot. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I yeah, found I too found that it. a lot of times when I'm using the grid, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, I, it's not that I just necessarily want light here, but I want to subtract light from other places. Of and course. so like, for example, in that shot, you're basically able to subtract light from that room and just really focus that light wherever you want it. And and I love how you clamped it to that light because you're right, there's no room to put a stand there. So it's just, mm -mm. you know, using a small speed light, focus that light. What I'm sure it's going to be brought up, uh, if not in the questions right now, but maybe later on. Um, people asking maybe what that clamp is. Do you remember what clamp you used to put that on that light? Uh, I think this was a Manfrotto. It, it was definitely a Manfrotto, but I'm not sure the actual name of the clamp. I actually I have two different things. I have a clamp, and I also have a uh, oh, like a, a duck. clamp. A duck. No, yeah, a duck. I have a duck. Um, <laughs> I, it's one that twists and it tightens, and the other one you just uh -huh. open and close it. Uh, sorry, I'm not. I don't remember the name of it, but. Uh, I think this one was the Manfrotto clamp. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hey, there's uh, one comment came in from uh, Adam. Uh, I think it was Adam Lyon, if I it went by for already, but he said he pulled off on the side of the road just to watch Crystal live. Oh my <laughs> gosh, thank you, Adam, thank you. <laughs> no, so that's awesome. Um, cool, oh well, let's, let's, let's talk about, you have a, a shot of uh, the guys uh, smoking in Paris. I would love to see that. Yeah, so, this groom right here, his name was Jeremy. He loves cigars and his buddy here, this is his best friend. They're, they're, this is what they do. They get together, they smoke cigars. So it wasn't like, let's take a cool shot of, you know, in Paris smoking cigars. This is what they do in their backyard at home. Um, and what I really wanted to do here was sort of create more contrast between the Eiffel Tower and, and their cigar smoke. And, and a really, the easy way to do that is to put light behind them. I, I, I wanted it to be, um, it, it was pretty far back. So I did use, I think I, I have the sphere. I'm not sure if I had the grid that day or not. So I used the sphere again. Um, and it was to the back right of the groom. As you can see, the light's hitting his friend a little bit harder. I had to burn it down a little in post. But uh, being able to travel, light is important. And MagMod was at my absolute go-to in this circumstance. And and having that there uh, allowed me to get this shot. So uh, I, I do like this the, the next shot too, but just to give you an idea of the difference. So this is without the light, um, mm -hmm. which, which is a cool shot. There's still a little bit of contrast, but to really focus in on where I want the viewer, whoever they may be, to to, to see, I, I was able to put that light back there. Yeah. Um, lower the uh, ambient a little bit and and create that contrast that was pretty cool yeah i know i absolutely love that and i love the way you use that that flash just behind him enough to create that rim but but it seems like there's enough ambient to get that detail on their face i mean it's it's right. phenomenal I, lo I love it and i love the way you took the eiffel tower and it's like everyone knows what you're looking at but you don't necessarily have to step back far enough to see the whole thing um it's just it's amazing i love that shot thank you yeah. So now one thing you just briefly touched on just for a second, I, I heard you mention, you, you said when you travel that you find, you know, having the MagMod with you, it's a lot easier. It, it, oh, absolutely. Is that, do, you, do you do a lot of traveling? Do you shoot a lot of destination weddings? Well, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, this was, this was the furthest I've been yet, but uh, for all of you out there watching that need a destination wedding photographer. No, I bet. <laughs> Um, this was the furthest I've been around the United States. Yes. And uh, taking soft boxes, larger soft boxes, it's really, it's not an option. I mean, I, I want to yeah. travel light, uh, and with as few bags as possible. And MagMod literally takes up, wow, is it in here? I don't even know. 
it takes up like this much room and that's for everything yeah, yeah. Like, no, it's nice because you can just squish it all down. No, exactly. I, yeah. I love that as well. I love being able to just stick it in my pocket or throw in a bag or or whatever. I saw, I saw on the forum. I saw on the forum sometimes. I shoot Nikon, so I have an SB nine hundred and that that I never actually use. But um, I have the case that it came in. It's a square case, and somebody at one point had all their grids lined up in there and all their gels, and that's what I use. My SB nine hundred soft case for for all my Magmod gear. So nice. No, that's awesome. Very very cool. So let's see. We we talked about the uh, the groom shot. What about? It looks like there's one right next to it with the the red. Um, yeah. is that, did you use a red gel there? Can you tell us a little bit about that one? I did. So I used a few Magmod products in the shot. I used the gel, um, which is behind them, uh, with along with the bounce. So, well, I'll get back to that. But and then there's the grid to the uh, left of them. And so I have my grid over here, and then I have mm -hmm. a gelled flash over here with the bounce and the reason I used the bounce was because it 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 makes everything appear a little bit larger and it and it and it pushed everything behind them um so oh sorry um her colors for her wedding were red and so that's why I chose this color again it's always about the story to me so I want to mm -hmm. I don't just want to use light because I want there to be a reason why this this church they picked this particular spot because she loved the architecture and I wanted to highlight that and so I was like let me pick a red gel put it behind her so it matches the colors that were a part of her wedding but then I also wanted to make sure that you could see their faces as well so that's how this image came to be so crystal on that shot there how far back was your grid i mean did you photoshop it out or was it just outside of the frame it's it, it was out of the frame so here's the pews just outside of the pew over here so it went pretty far i may have even had two grids on there i'm not sure but um but you can see if you follow can you see my cursor here uh -huh. if you follow the line you could just see the light that, that, that's yeah. getting to them. so it it was probably about right actually you know what i have it i have this full shot I ended up going vertical with it because it was a little bit distracting, but yeah, it was probably about just a few feet out of frame. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. No, that's cool. So in other words, you shot it uh, landscape mode and then you cropped it portrait mode. I did. Um, nice. Yeah. I, I like I the do landscape that a lot. version. I delivered that too because it, there was a little bit more architecture, but I feel like the focus should be on them and, and a little there. I feel like it was taken away a little bit with some of the details on the left side of the frame. So yeah, but it ended up gotcha. Out cool. gotcha. Well, I love how you use that grid on that left side to basically complement it and, and essentially just bring that little bit of light to them, but right. you know, have that gel and the balance behind them. And so you use the balance to kind of spread that light. And yeah, I wanted it to just, it yep. Cool. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, I'm trying to remember, there's a couple other shots that you showed me before we went live. And I, I, I like I said, I love all your work. Um, you had the the dance. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That one's phenomenal. This Tell us about that pretty, one. Yeah, this is a pretty cool... Uh, set up here. I, I, in doing this, I feel like oftentimes we do so many portraits of the bride. It's the bride's day. It's the bride. But uh, sometimes we forget that there is somebody else that makes the wedding possible, whether it, the partner. Um, and so I took some time here to focus on the groom for a moment. And what I really liked about this shot, uh, first of all, the composition you have the room sort of evenly divided and then you have this dude here chilling and he's lit up but the window was all the way over here and obviously the light for what I wanted wasn't powerful enough to yeah. to get to him and so I put a grid on a uh, flash and I have somebody right here out of frame holding it for me just to highlight his face to sort of mimic what's happening up here in this shot so I don't know I thought it was Without it, it didn't send the message or it didn't uh, show exactly what what I wanted it to. So one thing I do when, when I get to a scene is I uh, evaluate what's happening and just adding light where it's missing. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people are like, God, I wish this there was more light here. And all you have to do is, you know, make it make it happen. So So that's yeah. what I did. I wish there was more light on his face. And I didn't want it all over the room. I didn't want it on the bookcase. I, 
I just wanted it really on him and, and within the grid allowed me to make that happen. Yeah, no, I, I love how you use it there. And I love how you basically, again, if you were to expose this for the room, then essentially all those bookcases and everything would be lit up. I mean, in order right. to get him properly exposed. So the way you have that grid just highlighting him and, and what I love about it as well is you have this like perfect Rembrandt light right on his cheek there, this great little triangle pattern. Um, I don't know if that just happened per chance or if you're going for that, but either way, it's, it, it, it worked out perfectly. So totally, that's exactly what I was going for, Trevor. <laughs> and then the other thing I love on this shot, Crystal, is how the, the art above him, um, yeah, is, yeah, mimics it. And it, and it looks like there was a light above that art kind of lighting that up, I'm assuming. So, um, actually, yeah, there was, but I did have to pull that up a little bit in, in post. So gotcha. But, so you but there was, dodged it, it was a little there. bit. A little bit. That's cool. That's um, awesome. Very, very cool. You keep going. Yeah, yeah, we have some more time. Let's let's go over a few more. We're flying through these. Um, so this part of the day is, um, I don't know. I feel like everything for me. I want it to sort of unfold organically. And mm -hmm. the, the room, the light coming into this particular hotel room, it was really, really beautiful. But the unfortunate part, it was all right here. So the window, it, this was a hotel room, really nice, uh, was over here. And typically... So the window, the window was to the right. Yeah, it was to the right. And, and a lot of times what I've found, even if it's in a hotel room, many stories up, is that the bride always turns away. She always turns away because her friends, are, I don't know why, probably because just to make our lives harder, but she always turns away. And what I did was I, you could see the door frame here. I, mm -hmm. the doors open into the room. And what I did again, is I clamped a grid onto the open door mm -hmm. in case she turned the other way. And so once she turned, I think somebody's down here doing something with her shoe, but it just separated her. I, I, I turned the light on. It separates her from the background. Um, and I just, I don't know. I think it ended up being a really cool shot primarily because of the light. I mean, you have um, uh, the different layers here with with somebody in the foreground, the background. But, but without this light sort of highlighting her, creating that contrast between her and the wall, I feel like it wouldn't have been as uh, as I don't know. I think it's kind of cool, <laughs> but it, it yeah, wouldn't no. been nearly nearly as cool without without that contrast creating the separation. So I, I think you're absolutely right. I think it makes it more dynamic. It really makes it just pop. It you know that that rim light essentially just causes that separation. And and I also like you said, I love how you have you have the foreground, the middle ground, the background. How you shot over their shoulders, and then you you still have some of the bridesmaids in the back. It's just, phenomenal. I love it. And I think I think one thing. It, that was really important for this was just anticipating her turning the other way and into the dark side of the room and yeah. just having that light ready to go. And, and it was just a simple clamp, Manfredo clamp on the door, just a matter of turning a switch on my camera on to, to get that light really focused on her because I didn't want it everywhere. I wanted it to be on her and luckily it ended up working out. So that's really cool. Now a couple of people had mentioned that the clamp, um, and they were wondering when you get a chance, maybe later today, can you go into the MagMod community and just in the thread where this video is being live broadcast and just post maybe a link to it? Sure. Um, you, you don't have to do it right now, but just, just later on, um, or it could even be tomorrow, but, but I think people would be interested in seeing kind of what clamps, or if you don't have a link, maybe just maybe take a snapshot with your, your camera on your phone or something like yeah, that. So I, so I just um, looked it up real quick. It's a Manfrotto super clamp. So that's one of them. And then there's another okay. one. I gotta find it. But yeah, it's just called the super clamp. Um, and then I'll look for the other one because there's two different kinds. One is sort of quick and the, the super clamp takes a little bit longer. So I'll, I'll look those up and let people, cool. let people know. No, that's awesome. And then one other question that Yuvia had was, um, she was asking during that church shot, if we went back to that church shot with the red, she was wondering, like, do you remember how long you had to set that up? Like, would you guys have a long time in the church? Because, you know, sometimes when you do church ceremonies, right after the ceremony ends, they're trying to kick you out as fast as possible. Um, yeah. You know, you get I mean, family, that, family formals and then you're out. Did you find that you had a little bit more time or was this pretty quick to set up? Or I had a little bit of time. Yeah, there, not not a ton because they needed to get to the reception. But I knew, I knew what she wanted. I talked, I spent some time with her. I think 
for me, part of being able to tell my clients stories is getting to know what matters to them. And I knew Mm -hmm. before the ceremony that they wanted a shot like this and not necessarily this particular shot, but just they wanted the architecture of the church. And, and so once I got there for the ceremony, I realized, okay, in order to, to show this and their faces, I'm going to have to light them. And then I added this other light, but it didn't take a, a long time to set up. I mean, I had somebody work with my husband was working with me. No, hold on. It wasn't him at the time. It was a different person, but, but I had somebody working with me and I said, you know, let's put this light here, put the grid here. And they were making the the tweaks that I needed to happen. So it, it it didn't take a long time to do this. I would say I had about 10 minutes with them in the church after the ceremony. Yeah. 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 And, and we got more than just this shot. We got several and it's just a matter of being able to balance the ambient light with the, with the off camera. So, yeah. yeah. You, you know, it's funny. You had mentioned uh, having your husband and then you said, Oh wait, maybe it was somebody else. I, I love cause I, well, I have a lot of different second shooters that shoot with me. Yeah. And I love that. Um, and in fact, at one time, I even hire, hired a high school kid. All he did is he would come out and just help yeah. me set up lights. Um, you know, it was inexpensive, but it was a good experience for him. And, and unfortunately, he's off to college. But what I love about um, using the Magmod modifiers is that anybody, like it takes two seconds to show them how to use it. It's like, oh, right. you just magnet it right on, right. as opposed to setting up a softbox. Or I remember back in the old days, <laughs> like, like right. four years ago. Um, when we had to take the big clamps and we're trying to put these softbox together and it would take, you know, 10 minutes and clients are waiting. And stuff. Yeah. It's so. just, it's really, it's just modifiers simplified, but you get all the benefits of the, the larger softbox. I mean, I use the bounce now for all of my formal shots and it has simplified things tremendously. Just being able to pop off a grid and pop on a bounce and just one on yeah. each side, let's light them up. Let's get it done. Um, so yeah, no, I agree with, you. I agree with you. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, we're almost out of time, but can you maybe, uh, share with us one final image, maybe one of your reception or, or the couple leaving, um, you know, something that, uh, we can kind of end with. Sure. Let's end with this one. I love this shot. I know it's maybe nothing extra special to some people, but for this picture, and I remember this day I, I said, I'm going to put the grid on this thing. Just watch where the light's falling. Make sure you hit them because the grid, it is a very focused light. And in order to get to, to light the bride and the groom, they, they, they had to really watch where the light was falling. And mm-hmm. I had a when you, when you say they, they watch, you're talking assistant. about your assistant. Right. Yeah. The assistant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in this particular time, it was my husband, but um, I, I had a slower shutter. I wanted sort of, I wanted it to feel, I wanted to feel movement in the shot, but I wanted to freeze them. And yeah. the grid gave me that. So you can see this this lady over here. She's <laughs> totally in focus too because the light was also hitting her, but they were running out fast. And so just being able to freeze that motion and have the spark, the movement in the sparklers, it just, I think it just makes it feel more alive. I don't know. I, so yeah. It, yeah. having the grid focus the light on them and had I had any, you know, uh, like a, a soft box or an umbrella, everybody will be frozen. And, and the fact that I was able to just zone in on them, uh, sort of gave a little bit more life to the image, I think. So I love it. I love it. I I'm going to guess like what, maybe one thirtieth of a second, one fifteenth of a second. Do you remember what your shutter was? Oh, maybe it was, you, maybe I was you, my camera. <laughs> if you press yeah. I, yeah, no, it was, I think it was a little bit faster. I don't remember what I was shooting with there. Maybe my 50, it, or my, but it, I think it was closer to one, 100, but still they were literally it, running out. So, well, and that's the thing when you're moving like that, you're right. creating that motion as well, which is awesome. And that flash is freezing it. I, I love it. I love it. So super cool. These are great images, Crystal. I know a lot of people are, are finding this, uh, you know, very informative and they love a few people have commented how they really appreciate learning about how you're using the grids and the sphere and the balance and things like that. Um, go ahead and, and if you don't mind, uh, let's, let's stop sharing your screen for just a second. I want to bring you back full on here. Hey, there she is. Awesome. Awesome. Um, but we super appreciate you taking this time to, to talk a little bit about these images. And then of course, um, if you wouldn't mind when the, uh, video is done or like sometime tonight or tomorrow or whatever, you get a chance to check out that thread. And, and if somebody has some questions, maybe they can just, uh, pop some of those questions in there. Would you mind doing that? Is that all right? Absolutely. Yeah. 
I'll get on right after this. Five seconds. Five <laughs> seconds. Awesome, Crystal. Crystal, we absolutely love you. Thank you so much for doing this. And, and again, <laughs> I know you're going to be at Mystic coming up, right? Can you tell us I about am. that real quick? Yeah. So I'm going to be talking a little bit more about light once I get there. Uh, just uh, so the title is Storytelling with Light and uh, just being able to use different forms of light in uh, really uh, beautiful ways that, that allow us to tell the story of our clients. And um, yeah, pretty excited about that. So. That'll be fun. fun. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, Crystal, super appreciate it. And uh, thank, thank you so much. so much for taking the time to do this. Um, yeah. I know it's probably uh, time to go spend with your family now. That I think, what is it, like 5 o'clock, 5.30, something like that, Eastern time? So Yeah. Yeah, something cool. like that. Well, thank you so much. Thank you again. We appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. All right. All right. Bye, Crystal. Bye. <laughs>